So here it is. This is the uh, Smack Bite for the talk. Anyone can intubate teaching and learning uh, airway management the anti-fragile way. So one of the things that uh, I, I've talked about and Rich Levitin has talked about is, is trying to incrementalize a procedure. So again, one of the challenges is, is when you are faced with uh, adversity or facing a, a difficult airway and uh, you're stressed out, it, it's hard for you to recall information in a timely way and for you to execute motor activity in a, a smooth and continuous manner. And this is what the, the basis, again, of, of kata are. Again, I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly as I'm not a martial arts kind of guy. Uh, but kata, from what I understand, again, are choreographed, a series of choreographed movements. So it's made up of a, of a ton of different movements, and then you put them together as w in one fluid movement. So we've, in the past, referred to best look laryngoscopy, and it had about seven or eight different steps. And what we've done is we've modified this to, to apply to, to uh, all types of laryngoscopy, whether it be direct laryngoscopy or now a video laryngoscopy. And it's EVLI, so epiglottoscopy, voliculoscopy, laryngoscopy, and then finally intubation. The problem is, is when people go in with the goal of intubating, they look for the right hole, they stick the blade in, they look for the right hole, and they try to place it. Many times uh, they, are, they are successful, but that's not the way to do it if you are an occasional intubator. And I'm going to suggest that most of us are occasional intubators, even in emergency medicine. Um, so let me take you through this. So epiglottoscopy is a, is a term that uh, Rich Levitin has coined. And, and it's critical, whether you're using direct laryngoscopy or video laryngoscopy. It's about following the tongue, looking for your friend. I don't go in looking for the hole. And think of the epiglottis as, as like a flag for golf. Again, I don't play golf, but you don't need to see the hole uh, in uh, in golf to know where, where where you're going. As long as you can see that flag, you know where the hole is. And the same thing applies here. As long as you can see the epiglottis, you know where the glottic inlet is. So go in gradually as the tongue uh, uh, is compressed with the uh, video laryngoscope or the direct laryngoscope as the blade disappears, gradually compressed looking for that. The next one is voliculoscopy, and some people don't like this term, but uh, too bad. Um, and for direct laryngoscopy, it's about search for the hyoepiglottic ligament. And that hyoepiglottic ligament lives at the base of the vollecula. And when the blade tip engages that hyoepiglottic ligament, the epiglottis will move out of the way. And as you saw in this little video clip, if you lift early, it's not going to move the epiglottis um, out of the way. So again, as you see the blade tip disappear, um, now you compress, nothing happens to the epiglottis until the blade is seated at the base of the vollecula. And this is a game of millimeters. Too early, it's not going to move the epiglottis out of the way. And if you lift too late, you're actually going to deflect the epiglottis posteriorly and make your view worse. So for voliculoscopy, as it relates to video laryngoscopy, it's about not being too close. So the only way I think that you can guarantee that you're not too close is by having the blade tip seated in the vollecula so that the epiglottis is, is in view on the screen, as you see there on the left. And together with the remaining glottic structures, these should be only viewed in the upper half of the of the screen, and the glottic inlet um, should uh, be a, probably about a pogo of about 50% or less, as you see on the left. So you're looking down at that black hole, which is the trachea, as opposed to if you're not ha if you're not uh, um, seating your your blade in the vollecula and it's posterior picking up the epiglottis, you're going to have this great big view of the glottic inlet. Um, but you are posterior looking anterior up at the, the uh, glottic inlet. And what you can see there is the anterior tracheal wall. Um, and actually that little white curve structure at the base of the, uh, that uh, through, when you're looking through the glottic inlet is, is I think the, uh, the cricoid cartilage um, that you're, you're, you're seeing. Um, so, so this is what, what we mean by voliculoscopy as it relates to video laryngoscopy and not being too close. 
um, and I'll refer to that to, in, a, in a second. That's going to make intubation a lot easier. Um, with laryngoscopy, the most powerful move that you have when doing bimanual laryngoscopy, so using two hands to get your view, is by lifting the head. So head lift is uh, incredibly powerful. It's not reinforced when you learn on mannequins. I don't actually uh, commit to a pre-intubation position. As soon as I put the laryngoscope blade in, my right hand moves the occiput and I lift the head to the desired level to give me the optimal view. And then I place my towels in to maintain that view or have somebody's hands there. You can do ELM, external laryngeal manipulation, uh, with your hand. Um, and I think that's better than having somebody else burp it into view. Um, and uh, again, together, th these are, are, are ways to improve your view or improve laryngoscopy using two hands. Now, as it relates to video laryngoscopy, again, it's about aligning the camera and the blade with the long axis of the trachea. And the best way to do this is to be a bit more proximal and not being too close. So with your blade tip, as we talked about before, sitting in the vallecula, um, now my, my camera is looking down at the long axis of the, uh, of the trachea. And you see that black hole as opposed to the pink or white of the anterior tracheal uh, wall. Um, and what this positioning allows is it decreases those two opposing curves that you have to manage with intubation. So you don't have to put a great big curve on your, on your uh, tube to get it to the glottic inlet and then mount, ma manage that opposing curve from the glottis down the uh, trachea. So align the camera with the trachea, not the glottis. With intubation, let's clear up a couple things. First of all, a hockey stick curve, if you measure a hockey stick, is, is between 30 and 40 degrees, um, as you see there. And that's the desired curve that you want uh, with your endotracheal tube. But you do the bend straight to cuff and then about a 30 to 40 degree bend uh, distally, just proximal to that, that cuff. Um, and uh, when you're using it, when you're using a, a bougie, what you have to recognize for, for intubation is that uh, the bevel is positioned to the right, and you are managing the airway, you're intubating in the right side of the mouth, and what this can do is lead to this sort of situation where you get hold up on the uh, right side of the structures and this is managed by rotating your endotracheal tube and therefore rotating the bevel in a more favorable location uh, by uh, moving things to the left. So it takes the bevel off the right side of the structures, uh, moves the bevel actually to a posterior direction, the open face of the bevel to the posterior direction and you are going to uh, be able to uh, slide that uh, bougie uh, down into the trachea over, sorry, slide that end tracheal tube over the bougie or down into the trachea. With video laryngoscopy, the holdup that you often get is distal to the glottis. Now, you do need a, a more acute bend, and, and we recommend a bend of about 60 to 70 degrees. Again, not using a 90-degree bend, not shaping your endotracheal tube with the same curve as the uh, video laryngoscope blade, that hyperacute angle blade. It's sometimes greater than 90 degrees. Yes, that will get your tube to the glottic inlet, but you're going to have a tough time getting it down. So you want the least... Um, amount of, of uh, the least curve possible to get it to the glottic inlet so that you can manage that second curve, opposing curve, and get it down the trachea. So a 60 to 70 degree bend. Now what still will happen with this scenario is sometimes your tube is still going to get caught on the anterior tracheal wall and on the tracheal rings. And the way to manage this is to rotate your endotracheal tube to the right. And that takes the open face of the bevel superiorly or anteriorly. And it positions the distal uh, part of, the, of your endotracheal tube in an axis that is the same as the, uh, as the trachea. So you're rotating to the right. Now, if you can't remember that with a bougie, you rotate to the left um, when you meet uh, proximal holdup. And with a video laryngoscope over a uh, and an endotracheal tube, stylated endotracheal tube, if you meet hold up 
beyond the glottic inlet to uh, rotate it to the right, um, then uh, you know what? Rotate it one way and then rotate it the other way, and and you got a fifty percent chance of being right. And you can do that quickly and manage things. So this is uh, EVLI. These are the kata of uh, effective uh, a laryngoscopy, whether it's using a video laryngoscope or a direct laryngoscope. Uh, see you at uh, SMAC in Dublin. I'm not going to uh, talk about this in detail as part of my slide, so I can uh, focus in on some other issues. See you later.